and today I'm going to show you how to connect a computer power supply to your car audio amplifier. In this case, I have the Jack 245 4 channel, 4 channel amplifier. So normally power supplies usually have a 12 volts power supply that hooks up just right at the terminals here. Now my amplifier came, came with three cables, the red one, orange for the remote turn on and the black ground wire which i've connected here so the purpose of this video is to clean up everything you see here and transform it into something similar to this this is the current sub power supply that i use with my amp it's uh 25 amperes plus 12 volts so you see just two cables coming from the amp from the power supply as opposed to like hundreds of cables from here so let's so but first i'm going to show you how to turn on this power supply so this power supply usually has a green cable right here actually it's, it's the fourth cable from this side one two three four so normally when you want to turn on this power supply you connect the green cable to any black cable the black cable is the ground cable so one two three four is the green cable see here and any black wire In this case i've connected to this i can also connect it to the third wire one two three here when i connect it to this and i plug in power here that you should see the fan turn on so let me try that but before i turn it on i'm going to go through some safety features always use a three pin power cable with the ground wire and with your multimeter i'm going to check if the earth wire is has continuity with this earth wire this is the earth wire that sound it makes means it's a continuity with a short. So this cable is good. Also on your power supply, make sure that this middle cable has continuity with the chassis because you don't want to get electrocuted when something goes wrong inside the circuit. With the other wire, it will protect you and cut off this, the, this, the fuse. Or the circuit break at the mains also this is good the ground cable is connected to the body so let me turn it on and show you if the fan will come on Take a note of the fan. This amplifier is on, and also on the amp itself, you can see the green light is on. Now, this cable, the orange cable, is a remote turn on cable. I not, don't recommend removing cables on its own, but for your learning, I'll do it. When I remove the remote turn on cable, the amplifier should go off. And when I connect it, should come on so for more learning the orange cable is usually plus 3.3 volts the yellow cable which is what we are going to use is plus 12 volts in this case this has 25 amperes the blue cable this one here is minus 12 volts the red is plus 5 you can using for charging your phone the white here is minus 5 purple from here is plus 5 volts the black is the common the ground 
the green is power supply on the one i showed you how to turn it on and the gray it's pg i don't know what that means so we are going to remove everything from here and make it something similar to this now this is my old power supply from here i had used the i had connected my cables this is the red cable the positive and the remote turn on i had connected to the yellow cable which is the 12 volts and the black one to the black cable which is ground but in my ampli this power supply it also has white cables this using a quick test on my multimeter the white cable is also connected to the yellow cables so this is one yellow cable and test any white cable so the white cable in this case also has 12 volts So after you've opened it, there's these big capacitors here. They usually have charge and they can give you quite a shock, even if not connected to the powers. I'm going to use this relay here and I'm going to short out the power. I'm going to use this, these two legs. These are the relay legs and these are the switching legs. Make sure for just for safety you get both capacitors because there are two of them. And now it's safe to touch. So it's open and what I didn't show you off camera was this was the green cable that I used to turn on the power supply as of right now it comes from here it's even written remote right over there I've connected it directly to the black cables over here so whenever I plugged in any power here it just came on but today i'm going to connect a switch in between these two so what you do we're going to disconnect everything from here and like i showed you before the white cable and the yellow cable are just but the same connector so we're going to desolder every little cable from here except the green cable and one black cable for the switch i'm also going to leave one red cable the one i'm going to connect to my led connector
now we remove the original cable i'm just going to cut it from here it's quite hard So this is the switch I'm going to connect. Don't let it confuse you. It's quite a simple switch just as it has many terminals. This is a two-way switch. So I'm going to figure out which terminals I'm going to use. Using my multimeter here in the continuity section. have continuity here and no continuity here so I'm going to use these two legs So this is the LED I'm going to use to show whether the power supply has power. Now this LED is there's usually a flat side. Yeah, there's usually a flat side here, which is the negative, and a side that's not flat from the other side. So this is the positive and this is the negative. The negative usually has a notch, as you can see, right there it's flat, on the other side it's not flat, yeah, it's better from this angle. This is the flat side, the negative, and the other side is the positive. So with the positive I'm going to solder a resistor in series, so that the voltage from the power supply does not burn this unit. So first I solder the positive, the negative, sorry, the negative cable to the negative side with a notch. In series I'm going to use this small resistor here so that it, the voltage does not burn the LED. 
and the value for this small resistor is 4.6 kilo ohms But first, I solder it to the positive cable. So remember we had said that the white cable and the yellow cables were the positive 12 volts and they are both connected. So I'm just going to remove these hanging con wires and then I'm going to solder my thicker amplifier cable. So this is my positive red cable. So that's the positive, I've soldered it. Next we're going to solder the negative cable. So find where all the black cables were hanging from, this one's here, and this is where we're going to solder our black cable. So I've soldered the negative and the positive. So what about the remote turn-on? This is the remote turn-on for the amplifier, which I'm also going to solder to the positive line. The plus 12 volts, that is. The other 12 volts line was coming from this place. So I'm just going to plug this here. So remember the red cable was the 5 volts lines and the black cable was the negative terminal. So I have a trick up my sleeve. I have this USB cable that I'm going to solder directly to the red line so that I can use it for charging, maybe power banks, because the 5 volts line on this arm 
actually if you remember the 5 volt lines here had 22 amperes so that's what I'm going to use to be charging my power banks using this connector so the red cable is the positive the black cable is the negative the rest are data lines I don't need this let's move them off but this cable is really thin I'm not sure if it will deliver 22 amperes but it's worth a try so red to the red 5 volts black to the negative negative rail so we are left with the switch and the light so this switch, the switch I'm going to connect it to the remote remote cable which is this one I had already connected it to the ground so I just unsolder it from here and I can just remove it completely this one Then I use my green cable and solder it to that point. This is the cable that will turn on the power supply. And then negative to the negative terminal. Hmm which is over here so now I'm going to solder my light to the 5 volts line too because I need it to be brighter I could solder it to the orange 3.3 volts but I think I'm going to solder it to the red cable here I'll just use this hole and solder it together with the red and the red cable so just a quick walk through i have soldered the positive red wire to the originally the yellow or the white cable in case of this amp the black wire to the negative terminal and the remote turn on wire to the positive side too I've added a 5 volts charging line an LED light to show the power supply is on and a switch for the remote turn on so let's just put everything back together and see if it works